In chapter four, we talk about enhanced entity relationship modeling. So we're going to take what we've learned in chapter three and extend it a little bit to be able to capture some other kinds of things that we need to represent in a real business case. So chapter four lays out as follows. First of all, when we talk about the enhanced ER or extended ER, we use EER to describe this. And so some different concepts that we'll talk about. Uh, first of all, we'll include all the modeling concepts that we learned in chapter three, as well as the idea of subclass, superclass, specialization and generalization, the concept of inheritance for both attributes and relationships, and then talk about some constraints on specialization and generalization. So what exactly is a subclass and what is a superclass? So each entity type that we have can also have additional meaningful subgroupings of its entities. So for example, consider an employee. An employee can be further grouped into secretary, engineer, or technician, or otherwise. And this is based on the employee's job. And so the rationale for doing this might be that you know, we can use the same employee ID for the secretary, the engineer, and the technician, um, but maybe they have a different designation that could be captured by an attribute that just a plain old employee doesn't capture. We could also consider manager as a subclass of employee, as well as things like salaried employee or hourly employee based on the employee's method of pay. And so the EER diagram extends the ER diagram to represent these additional subgroupings called subclasses or subtypes. So for the purposes of this class, I'm going to use the term subclass and superclass. So what exactly is a subclass and what exactly is a superclass? So sometimes we want to have subgroupings of a particular entity type. So for example, we have an employee superclass and we want to represent um, different types of employees that may have separate attributes. So secretary might have attributes that are different from that of technician, that are different from that of manager. But each of these subclasses will inherit, as what we call it, certain um, attributes from the superclass of employee. So for example, the primary key. So each of these subclasses can have a primary key from employee. So they would each have an employee ID. And this we can also refer to as an is a relationship. So a secretary is an employee, technician is an employee. So, and we note that an entity that is a member of a subclass represents the same real world entity as some member of the superclass. So you could also consider something like we have a superclass of animal and we have different animal IDs that we're tracking at the zoo. And then we might have different subclasses um, like snake or lion. And each of these might have separate attributes that don't have anything to do with one another, but also attributes like a primary key of animal ID uh, that get inherited from the corresponding superclass. So each subclass member is the same entity, but in a distinct specific role. So the secretary play a very specific role as an employee. And an entity cannot exist in the database merely by being a member of a subclass. It also has to be a member of the superclass. So if you do have that technician, it's got to also exist as an employee. And if you have a member of the superclass, so like an employee, it can be optionally included as a member of any number of its subclasses, depending upon the distinction. So for example, we may have a salaried employee who is also an engineer, that belongs to two different subclasses, engineer and salaried employee, if you reference that diagram again. We may also have a salaried employee who is also an engineering manager that belongs to three different subclasses, manager, engineer, and salaried employee. And it's not necessary that every entity in a superclass be a member of some subclass. So how do we represent, this is by the way, what's called specialization. So we have different specializations, that are characterized by a subclass. So subclass is said to be a specialization of the superclass. And so here, we're not gonna use this U notation. Um, we're just going to have, based on the type of specialization that it is, we'll have a circle uh, with a line coming off of the superclass and then lines out of that circle to the corresponding subclasses. So an entity that is a member of a subclass is said to inherit from the superclass. And so it actually inherits all attributes of the entity as a member of the superclass. 
and it also inherits all relationships of that entity as a member of the superclass. So for example, in the previous slide, secretary, as well as technician and engineer, inherit the attributes name, social security number, etc. from the employee superclass. And every secretary entity will have values for those inherited attributes. So again, specialization is a process of defining a set of subclasses of a superclass. And the set of those subclasses is based upon some distinguishing characteristics of the entities in the superclass. So for example, we have secretary, engineer, and technician. Each one of these is a specialization of employee based on job type. Also, we have manager. It's a specialization of employee based on the role that the employee plays. So we may have several different types of specializations of the same superclass. Another specialization of employee based on method of pay is salaried employee and hourly employee. And so these superclass and subclass relationships and specialization can be diagrammatically represented in these enhanced ER diagrams. Attributes of a subclass that are not in the superclass are called specific or local attributes. So for example, the attribute typing speed of the secretary. And the subclass can also participate in specific relationship types. So for example, a relationship of belongs to of hourly employee. So you can see here that while employee doesn't belong to a trade union, that hourly employee does have that relationship, belongs to trade union. So you can actually have relationships off of subclasses that aren't actually, um, that don't pertain to the superclass. The opposite of specialization is generalization. So this is the process by which several classes with common features are generalized into a superclass. So for example, we may have car or truck, and these can get generalized into the superclass of vehicle. So both car and truck become subclasses of the superclass vehicle we can view car truck that's set as a specialization of vehicle. Alternatively, we can view vehicle as a generalization of car and truck. So here's an example of what that looks like. We have car and truck by themselves, and then we make the decision that we want them to be generalized into vehicle. And again, we'll explain this notation shortly. So then we have these subclasses, car and truck, of the superclass of vehicle. And you can see that car and truck then would inherit uh, the attributes of vehicle ID, price, and license plate number from vehicle, and also have local attributes of their own, like max speed uh, or tonnage. So we can classify different types of specialization, and those are the following. So first, predicate-defined or condition-defined specialization, and this is based on some predicate. So for example, based on the value of an attribute, like job type or age. Furthermore, if all subclasses in a specialization uh, have the membership condition on the same attribute of the superclass, then the specialization is referred to as an attribute-defined specialization. And the attribute is called the defining attribute of that specialization. When we do not have a condition for determining membership, uh, in a subclass, then the subclass is called user-defined, and so this is defined by the user on an entity by entity basis. So to further define predicate-defined subclass, if we can determine exactly the entities that will become members of each subclass by condition, then the subclasses are called predicate-defined or condition-defined subclasses. And the condition is a constraint that determines the subclass members. If all subclasses in a specialization have a membership condition on the same attribute of the superclass, then the specialization is called an attribute-defined specialization. And the attribute is called the defining attribute of the specialization. So for example, job type is the defining attribute of the specialization. So basically, if their job type is specified as secretary, then they're a secretary. If it's specified as technician, they're a technician. If it's defined as an engineer, then they're an engineer and they fall into that particular subclass of employee and we have an attribute defined specialization. If no condition defines membership, then the subclass is called user defined. So basically membership in a subclass is determined by the database user by applying an operation to add an entity to the subclass. This is something that would be done on a case by case basis 
by the user of the database. So membership in the subclass is specified individually for each entity in the superclass by the user. So furthermore, in your reading, there are two basic constraints that can apply to specialization or generalization. And those are the constraints of disjointness and completeness. So let's take a look at the definitions of these. So the disjointness constraint specifies that the subclasses of the specialization must be disjoint. So in other words, if you have an entity that's, for example, a secretary, they cannot also be a technician um, or an engineer. They can only fall into that specific subclass, and each of those specific subclasses is disjoint. So an entity can be a member of at most one of the subclasses of the specialization. And this we designate by showing a D in that circle in the diagram. If the specialization is not disjoint, then it is what we call overlapping. And so that means that maybe a secretary could also be a technician or an engineer. This is not the case in the diagram that we have, but if it were the case, then the same entity could be a member of more than one subclass of the specialization. And we would specify that by using an O in the diagram. So in addition to disjointness, we also have the completeness constraint. And we have two different types of completeness, either total or partial. And this we're not going to worry about representing in the diagram, although there is notation for it in your textbook. You can check out the Lucid chart video to see how we uh, will represent subclasses and superclasses there. So total specifies that every entity in the superclass must be a member of some subclass in the specialization or generalization. So in other words, if we have different employees, each of those employees has got to be also a member of some, of the, some subclass. So they have to be a technician, they have to be a secretary, or they have to be an engineer. If that's not the case, then we call it partial. So they might be just an employee designated in general, and they don't have to necessarily belong to any of the particular subclasses that are specified. So in total, we can actually have four different types of specialization or generalization. So we can do disjoint and total. Maybe we have um, employees and each one of those employees must belong to a subclass of hourly or salaried, but they can't both be hourly and salaried. So that would be disjoint as well as total. We could also have a case where we have disjoint and partial. So the subclasses, if uh, one of the entities is a member of a specific subclass, that it can't be a member of a different subclass as well, but that it doesn't necessarily have to belong to a subclass if it is part of that superclass. So maybe we have a designation of manager that we have a superclass, and then we have different subclasses of different types of managers. And you can't be more than one type of subclass manager, but you don't necessarily have to belong to one of those subclasses. We can also have overlapping and total. So these it's a little bit more difficult to find examples, but basically you could belong to any of the subclasses. You could belong to multiple subclasses, but if you are a member of the superclass, then you've got to belong to at least one subclass. And finally, we might have overlapping and partial, where Maybe you belong to the superclass, you don't have to belong to a subclass, and you can belong to as, so I guess you can belong to as few or as many subclasses as you like. And as a note, generalization is usually total because the superclass is derived from the subclasses. So you assume that a car and truck, that if they are a vehicle, that they'll have to either be a car or a truck in those subclasses. So again, here's an example of disjoint partial specialization. So we can have an entity that's an employee and they can just be designated as employee. They don't have to belong to one of the subclasses, but if they are one of these subclasses, like a secretary, technician, engineer, they can't be more than one. They can only fall into one of these subclasses. Here's an example of overlapping and total. So we do have part class and we have two subclasses, manufactured and purchased part. And so a part could be both manufactured and purchased. So it could have any number of these attributes. 
but we also have total constraint here. So if we do have a part, it must belong to one of these, at least one of these subclasses. It must be manufactured or purchased. If we have a case where we have a subclass that has further subclasses specified on it, then we get what's either referred to as a hierarchy or a lattice. So basically in a hierarchy, we have that every subclass has only one superclass. And this is what's referred to as single inheritance. If you look at it, you basically have a tree structure. If you have what's called a lattice, then you have a case where a specific subclass could belong to more than one superclass. And this is what's referred to as multiple inheritance. So that subclass would actually inherit all of the attributes from as many superclasses that it belonged to. And so here's an example of a shared subclass where we have multiple inheritance and we have what's called a lattice in terms of specialization. So we actually have engineering manager that is classified as an engineer, a manager, as well as a salaried employee. So it's inheriting attributes from all three of these superclasses. So in a lattice or hierarchy, a subclass inherits attributes not only of its direct superclass, but also of all its predecessor superclasses. So everything above it uh, counts and belongs to it as an attribute. And a subclass with more than one superclass is what's called a shared subclass. This is a case of multiple inheritance. So we can have specialization hierarchies or lattices or generalization hierarchies or lattices, depending upon how they're derived. But at the end of the day, we're just going to use specialization to stand for the end result of either specialization or generalization, because we can always think of it as being top down, regardless of how it was derived. So in this video, we introduced the enhanced entity relationship model concepts, including subclass and superclass. We talked about specialization and generalization and how inheritance works. We talked about the different constraints on these types of schemas. So whether we have total or partial and whether we have overlapping or disjoint. And so these concepts basically augment the entity relationship model that we talked about in chapter three and we got to see some of the notation. So I encourage you to check out the video that shows the notation that we'll use in Lucidchart for these types of models.